In this guide, we'll go over how to maximize your capabilities as a Blood Death Knight in the Knockhood Offensive Dungeon. In the Granith and Raging Storm areas, you will want to clear quite a bit of trash before you move on, because it's generally easier than the trash in the Centaur area. You want at least 94.5% done before moving to the last area. There are two mobs you need to watch in the Granith area. The first are the Horn Sounders. They can be gripped to interrupt their Rally the Clan ability, and you should do so. The second are the Knock Hood Lance Masters. You need to move out of their War Stomp and interrupt their Disruptive Shout. Granith is simple. Run out of his Tectonic Stomp ability and help CC the Ad. The Saboteur should be gripped and chained to slow its movement speed, allowing the DPS to kill him before he gets to the weapons. Out. The Raging Storm area has four lightning totems that have mobs around them you need to kill before you can kill the boss. Make sure to group the adds as close to the totem as possible so everything can be cleaved at once. The totem should be priority one while killing the mobs. Make sure you kill this roaming pack before engaging the boss. It can and will wipe you during the boss fight if you don't kill it beforehand. The Raging Tempest has a few abilities to watch out for. The first is Lightning Strike, and it will put large blue circles around everybody. You need to spread out so you aren't taking damage from two circles at once. The second is Uncontrollable Energy, and this will spawn orbs that need to be soaked. Let your DPS and healers get them first, and you soak any they miss before they get to the boss. Personal. They deal minimal damage and provide a stacking buff that increases damage and healing. The third is Electrical Storm, and this deals damage to everybody. It's mainly a healer check, but you can help out by popping a defensive cooldown. The centaur area has the most dangerous Frontal. trash in the dungeon, Frontal. and there are three mobs you really need to watch out for. The first to watch is Risen Warrior. It will apply Mortal Strike, which reduces healing received by 30%. The second is the Corruptor. It will channel Necrotic Corruption, placing exploding orbs around your group. Grip it to interrupt the channel. The third is the Death Speaker, and Frontal. it casts Frontal. a circular Frontal. AE Frontal. around itself called Chant of the Dead. You need to move out of this while he channels. The Risen Mystic can be made into your pet, and it's extremely beneficial for you to do so. It will apply a buff to your group, giving them 20% haste. The third boss of the dungeon is actually 2 in 1. Ow. Maruk will cast a tank buster ability called Brutalize. It's not unwise to use a defensive for this. He will also cast Frightful Roar in a 15 yard circle around himself you need to run out of. He does this in combination with Tira's Spirit Leap, so look for the circle indicator of where she is going to land and move there. His third ability is Earth Splitter, and he targets random players and casts in a line towards them. Move out of it. He does this in combination with Tira's Guardian Wind ability. Tira will cast Spirit Leap, where she leaps to a nearby location. She does this in combination with Maruk's Frightful Roar. Her second big ability is called Gale Arrow. She targets random players and fires an arrow that does damage and causes tornadoes to burst out in four directions from each player hit. Dodge the tornadoes. Her third ability is called Guardian Wind. She does this in combination with Maruk's Earth Splitter ability. It needs to be interrupted as soon as possible. Throughout this entire fight is Ancestral Bond. When Tira and Maruk are more than 10 yards apart, they gain a stacking buff that increases their damage by 10% every second. Stack them as much as possible throughout the fight. The last two trash mobs are extremely simple. Batak casts Blood Curdling Shout, which must be interrupted, and Broad Stomp, a frontal Dodge. attack which needs to be dodged. Bolera will cast Dodge. Ravaging Spear, which needs to be dodged, as well as Vehement Charge, which also needs to be dodged. Kill them as close together as possible, so the Raging Kin buff is minimal. Balakar Khan is a two-phase fight with an intermission. In Phase 1, he will cast Rending Strike, which applies a bleed and increases damage taken from Savage Strike. Savage Strike is a tank buster ability, so use a defensive if you feel the need. These deal physical damage. He will cast Iron Spear on a random player, then does Iron Stampede to his spear. You can negate the Stampede by having oh the targeted person run behind a rock located to the left of the boss. Mark the spear location to make it easier for the group. He will cast Upheaval, which does damage in a circle around each group member, and knocks them back. Spread, spread out. During the intermission, he will activate four caster adds that need to be interrupted as much as possible, grouped together, and burned down. Also starting in the intermission is an ability called Lightning, which puts blue swirlies on the ground and you need to move out of them. Lightning persists through phase two. 
In Phase 2, Rending Strike turns into Conductive Strike, and Savage Strike turns Personal. into Thunder Strike. These deal nature damage instead of physical damage. Iron Spear changes to Static Spear, which operates the same way, but pulls everybody to the spear. Your group needs to spread after being pulled, because the boss is going to stampede to the spear. Use the same positioning from Phase oh 1 to negate the charge with the rock. Upheaval turns into Crackling Upheaval, Personal. and now after it casts, it leaves a Crackling ca Cloud behind, which deals damage to anybody who stands in it. Spread. That's the entire dungeon in under 6 minutes. Enjoy your loot.